In the last video, we very briefly noted that the addition of an enolate to an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound actually generates an enolate intermediate itself, since a pair of electrons gets pushed onto the alpha carbon. If this enolate can then add back to the original Michael donor, if the Michael donor has, for example, a ketone group within it, then an aldol type reaction can occur and we can form a ring through two carbon-carbon bond forming processes. So the essence of this idea is that we can first do a Michael addition. This generates an enolate, and that enolate can then engage in an aldol type reaction, which results in the formation of a ring. Because this is a ring forming reaction, it's called an annulation. And more specifically, it's called the Robinson annulation. And the Robinson annulation is a beautiful application of both Michael and aldol chemistry. Before discussing the mechanism in detail, let's look at the starting materials and products because there's a complicated addition process that's going on here. The overall reaction is addition since we're taking two substrates and forming a single product, but there seems to be a lot going on. The first thing to notice is that the substrates are a beta diketone and an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. The beta diketone contains an acidic carbon between two carbonyl groups, and this is the initial nucleophile in the reaction and the unsaturated carbonyl compound, the unsaturated ketone, contains an electrophilic beta carbon. Conjugate addition is going to occur selectively because the enolate we would generate here will be very soft. In fact, in the product, we can see the consequences of a Michael reaction between this alpha carbon and this beta carbon. A new bond is formed between the carbons highlighted in red and blue, and this occurs in the initial stages of the mechanism. Notice also, however, that the molecule in red contains an electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and the molecule in blue, the alpha-beta unsaturated ketone, contains a potentially nucleophilic alpha carbon that could be deprotonated. If we turn our attention to the product now, we see that these two carbons also end up bound to one another through not a single bond, but a double bond. And what happens here is an aldol condensation between the nucleophilic alpha carbon highlighted in black and the electrophilic carbonyl carbon highlighted in green. In fact, either of the two carbonyl groups could react, but these groups are enantiotopic in the intermediate after Michael addition, and so it doesn't matter which one we use. The reaction does typically establish a stereocenter at this carbon between the two carbonyl groups in the beta diketone, but unless we have a chiral catalyst or some chiral substrate involved in the reaction, We'll generally get a racemic mixture. I want to look at the mechanism in broad brushstrokes because the details we've actually already seen in previous videos on the aldol condensation and Michael reaction. The first few elementary steps involve the Michael addition of this Michael donor to this Michael acceptor. The alkoxide base deprotonates this compound. This generates a nucleophilic and stabilized enolate. The enolate then adds to the alpha beta unsaturated ketone to give a new enolate through a Michael addition process. In the second stage of the mechanism, a couple of proton transfers occur. This results in the formation of a new enolate, and this kind of enolate isomerization, we might call it, where the negative charge changes positions, is necessary in order to achieve a sensible ring size in the final product. Notice that if we were to think about cyclizing this intermediate using this as the nucleophilic atom and this as the electrophilic atom, this re would result in the formation of a four-membered ring. That tends to be disfavored. Instead, proton transfers occur to put negative charge at the other alpha carbon, if you will, at the methyl carbon in this case. And now we have a nucleophilic alpha carbon that finds itself six carbons away from an electrophilic carbonyl carbon. So through nucleophilic addition, proton transfer, and the eventual loss of water, in other words, through an aldol condensation type process, we ultimately arrive at the final product shown here. So again, in the interest of time, I won't show the mechanistic details for the Michael reaction and the aldol condensation, but you can see these in previous videos. On the whole, the Robinson annulation is a great application of Michael and aldol reactivity in a single reaction, in a single pot in which the overall mechanism combines Michael and aldol type processes. Synthetically, it's also fabulous since we have a carbonyl group that remains in the product as well as an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone within the product. So this can be further elaborated to much more complex products through additional reactions. Because of the synthetic utility of the Robinson annulation, it's worth taking a little bit of time to analyze the reaction retrosynthetically. So a very general Robinson product is drawn for us here. The most general product of Robinson annulation 
is a 1,5 dicarbonyl compound that contains a conjugated enone. In other words, contains an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Recall that the unsaturated ketone comes from an aldol type process with this atom highlighted in black as the nucleophile and this atom highlighted in green as the electrophile. Originally, this was part of a carbonyl group. The Michael process generates the bond between the alpha carbon of this carbonyl group and the beta carbon with respect to the other carbonyl group, which is here. To draw the starting materials that give rise to this product, we disconnect these bonds based on the nature of the reactions used to make them. So in this general example, one of the reactants would be a beta diketone with this structure. Notice that we replaced the carbon-carbon double bond with a carbon-oxygen double bond, carbonyl group, and the other reactant would be an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound in which we introduce a carbon-carbon double bond between the alpha and beta carbons of the other carbonyl group in the target or final product of the Robinson annulation. Just to make this retrosynthesis crystal clear, let's highlight these atoms that we highlighted in the target in the starting materials. The Michael nucleophile is the alpha carbon between the two carbonyl groups in the beta diketone. The Michael electrophile is the beta carbon in the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. The aldol nucleophile is the other alpha carbon of the alpha beta unsaturated ketone, and the aldol electrophile is one of the carbonyl carbons in the beta diketone. And here, these two carbons are different, but to generate this specific product, we would have to engage this carbonyl carbon highlighted in green. 